So uh, I guess it was uh, the first Bush was president when <laughs> my laboratory discovered a gene called PI3K or PI3 kinase. And we discovered this, it, it, it encodes an enzyme. You know what an enzyme is. And uh, we discovered that this enzyme was playing a central role in telling cells to take up sugar and use it to grow. So, and this was happening in a variety of cells. We first find it happening in, in cancer cells, but it actually happens in a lot of cells. Uh, we worked on the mechanism by which this enzyme is regulated, uh, and eventually it was discovered that this is the most mutated gene in, in breast cancer. But it's not just breast cancer. This gene is also very frequently mutated in colorectal cancers, uh, in, in a variety of cancers. In fact, all cancers have this gene mutated to some extent. And this, uh, you know, this is analogous to the discovery that HER2. <laughs> I, actually, I think that's my wife calling. <laughs> it's, a, it's, the same, it's the same tone I use for my wife. It's so demanding, you cannot <laughs> refuse to. <laughs> so, so you all know about Herceptin and you know about HER2. So HER2 is a gene that is amplified. It's, it undergoes an aberration that drives a subset of breast cancers. And the discovery of that amplification and that you could target that gene led to the development of Herceptin and these miraculous responses in a subset of cancer that other, prior to that was re really not very treatable. Uh, and as we've learned how to use Herceptin better over the years to use as an adjuvant therapy uh, early on in the disease, we're finding better and better cures. Uh, the problem is that we know that everyone doesn't always have a long-term cure, and so we have to start using drugs in combinations. So the realization that PI3K is mutated even more frequently than HER2 in breast cancer has opened up a huge possibility of coming in with novel approaches. The problem is, how do we identify who, ha who is going to respond? Everyone doesn't respond to Herceptin everyone is not going to respond to a PI3K inhibitor. The advantage is that now that, that we know a lot about this and how frequently this gene is mutated uh, in, in uh, women's cancers and other cancers, pharmaceutical companies have responded by developing drugs that target this enzyme. So these are not injectable antibodies, but really small pills that you take orally. Currently, there are 18 PI3K inhibitors in clinical trials. Uh, in fact, that's almost overwhelming, and it makes it a problem of deciding which one are you going to use, uh, which company do you trust most. So that's where our research is currently focused, first on which of these various inhibitors is likely to actually work in patients, and secondly, who are the subset of patients it's going to work for, and then thirdly, how can we combine it with other drugs, like Herceptin, for example, uh, or with uh, ER antagonists, uh, to expand the fraction of people who are like to, likely to respond and perhaps really get cures rather than just slow down the progression of the disease. And so that's really what our research does. One of the ways that we attack this problem is we generate mice that have exactly the same mutations in their genes, in their breast epithelial tissue, as we see occurring in the human disease. So these mice, as opposed to mouse models that existed in the past, it really didn't at all replicate what happens in the human disease. These really replicate very, with high fidelity, what the, was going on in the human disease. And these mice will die of breast cancer unless we try to cure them. Gerber Wolf, who's also uh, one of the recipients of this year. Gerber, could you just stand up for a second? Uh, so, so, so Gerberg is an MD-PhD, uh, and she works with these mice, and she also works with human patients and runs clinical trials at the BI. Uh, and uh, so she and I are working together in trying to figure out, based on the mutational events in the cancer, 
which PI3K inhibitor, and in what combination can we see responses. So these are coming back to the biomarkers. HER2 is a biomarker. Mutated PI3K is another biomarker that we will use to select patients to decide who goes on which trial. Now, once we come up with an idea of what drug combination to use and which patient to select, I then go to my colleagues, <laughs> Jose and Ursula and, and, and others in the audience. Uh, we all work as teams together uh, to apply this knowledge to designing clinical trials to test whether what we're seeing in the mice really is going to benefit the patients. Thank so you very much. That's what we do. Great.